Hello art students, it's dress up day for homecoming. So hopefully my outfit and my makeup and my hair don't uh, prevent you from learning from this great video on how to build with clay using coils. You can actually build anything you want with clay using coils and you'll never know that's how you did it. It's also the most successful way to make sure your clay doesn't fall apart. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. So how you make a coil, you want your thickness to never be thicker than your thumb and never thinner than your finger. You're going to take the clay and I'm balling it up so that it's kind of round all the way around and then I start rolling. Notice how little space my clay actually rolls, right? If it gets squared out, you just kind of squish the edges so it turns around again and then you can keep rolling. So roll, roll, roll. Notice I take my hands out as I roll and then I start over. Close and then out. Close and then out. As I roll, I keep working, making sure that if it gets squared off, I just pinch it around so that it will roll again. Once I've rolled out my piece, I need to check, do I have anything thinner than my finger? If so, I need to pitch that out of the way. Then, as long as I have about the thickness of my thinner finger, but no thicker than my thumb, I'm going to get slip, or sometimes we call that slurry, and I'm going to get my fork, I'm going to score my snake, I'm going to add, or my coil it's really called, add my slip, and I'm going to roll it into a base. This is really important. Everything in ceramics has to have a base to it or else it will break in the kiln. So always start with a base. Then you'll notice your coils don't have to stay rough. See how I used the back of the fork? Let's rewind a little bit so you can see. So I rolled it in on itself. It's slipping it slurry. I used the back of the fork to scrape it clean. I slipped and scored again to add my next layer. You can keep doing this so you are building up as you go. See, I built to my next layer. Now, uh, oop. Let's rewind. I want you to see that again. Oh, got lost track. Oh, that's okay. We'll start it over. So I am slipping, scoring, slipping, scoring, rolling around to get my base. Smoothing out with my fork, re-slipping, re-scoring, adding my next level. Then re-slipping, re-scoring, adding my next level. Then I might not like those coils, so watch how I'm going to score the side, and then I'm going to smooth it with the knife. So I score it, and then I smooth it, okay? Now, you can start adding embellishments. So notice, I tilted it on its side. That was the base of my piece. So that's kind of a helpful hint, is sometimes it's better to, like, I'm pretending I'm building a pig. It's better to build it upwards and then tilt it, right, to get the look that you're wanting. Any embellishments that you add, just make sure you always slip and score and no thicker than your thumb. If you make the clay thicker than your thumb, it will explode in the kiln. You can add eyes, you can smooth it out, you can round it off, right? I'm doing all this work with the knife. I can ask for additional tools if I need it. And I only did one eye and a snout and one ear so you could kind of get a sense of what it looked like. Okay, so your piece of clay cannot be thinner than your finger, thicker than your thumb. If it gets thicker than your thumb, we have to hollow it out because we need that air to be able to go in and out of your clay piece. If we trap air, we will explode your clay. And it's not like a cool explosion, like no one gets to see it. No one even gets to hear it. We just open up the kiln and your piece will be in a million little pieces. So it's really important that we never make things thinner than our finger or thicker than our thumb. With that, enjoy happy art making using the coil method. 